What are we doing? Yeah, I totally forgot. Welcome back to another Extraordinary Times. I'm Jeremy. I'm AJ. And let's get this started with the Olympic news because, well, they just had their opening ceremonies today and apparently it was awesome. Like, Mr. Bean was there and Prince Charles and Camilla came out. You know, Mittens was there because he, you know, was arguing with people. And because, you know, everyone's invited. So, yeah, they, they started with the pouring the rings in, in their forges and then they called out the dwarves and they used their Thor hammers on the rings and then all of a sudden the rings start flying up in the air and they're like and we said ring explosion and then all of a sudden Mary Poppins are everywhere oh my gosh Mary Poppins are everywhere and all this to distract from the ugly statue out front good job speaking of the Olympics uh, the first couple of events have gone through one of which being the, the start of the archery competition already right at the beginning a record has been broken by the previous record holder, South Korea's Im Dong Hyun, breaking it with 699. Now, this is actually a little bit bigger than it sounds because Im Dong Hyun is legally blind. Like, really, really blind. He has severe myopia and just says, I aim at the big blob at in the middle of the target. His arrows looked a little bit like this. It was really kind of cool. And then he, you know, gave his number one because he is number one. Let's be honest. Yeah. Celebration. And yet another throwback to, well, gun control because it just keeps creeping into the media because the Democrats are now trying to use a cybersecurity bill that they were trying to pass and, you know, link gun control to it so that they can try and slip it through. And they're trying to limit, like, magazines to really small magazines and stuff like that. It's just really kind of stupid. So, mm. high five. Kind of a throwback uh, for this uh, last bit of a beginning Happies. news here. Uh, the whole Chick-fil-A debacle. The vice president of the PR department of Chick-fil-A has passed away, Don Perry. Um, sad news uh, in the middle of all this bad publicity from the left and all this, you know, support from everybody else who realizes, you know, there is no hate going on. The one person they, they probably really need right now, the PR department, is gone, so condolences. Not awesome. And speaking of not awesome, Lupe Ontiveros, who played, like, a maid in basically everything from the 90s and the 2000s, uh, she died in El Paso. Kind of ironic that Sherman Hemsley died in El Paso like yesterday or the day before, right? Yeah, it was, a couple days ago. That's uh, crazy. What are these all these old people retiring to El Paso for? So on to some good news because, well, we need it after all We need that. some good news. Um, after four years, a wedding ring has been found. A while ago, you know, four years ago, a woman was out camping by the side of the lake and uh, lost her wedding ring. It was so devastated because it was such a beautiful ring. She never got another one. Now the kayaker was going through, saw a ring on the ground, thought it would, might have been a setup, you know, looked around for cameras. Nope, took pictures. When I uh, was going to put an article on newspaper, when talked about it at a Rotary Club, and the guy goes, huh, let me call up my, uh, my wife, whose sister lost a ring around that area a while ago. Turns out, yep, that was her. <laughs> <laughs> of all the coincidences, I mean, that's that's pretty awesome. So yeah, go Idaho. It was up in uh, Rigby Lake, up in Idaho Falls. Really right. cool, really beautiful area. But we move on. Who's calling me? Hello. Hi. You're on the extraordinary times. It's very, it's very possible. I will have to get back to you about it though. Okay. Bye. And we move on to New Jersey, where they have Six Flags Great Adventure. Apparently, boy was on a roller coaster, and that roller coaster was coming in for a landing in the in the you know docking area, and boy got hit in the face by a bird, which is crazy, and apparently not as uncommon as you hope it would be, because well, birds like amusement parks and snacking on things that you leave laying around. By the way, throw away your trash. Good ideas. But, you know, this isn't really rare. Fabio got hit in the face one time by a goose uh, <laughs> on a roller coaster, and it was crazy. And look, blood on his face. That's gross. Moving on. Speaking of being goosed. Uh, <laughs> I think you don't want to be hit in the face by. Oh, jeez. Um, originally, for a while now, we've had the biggest bomb, well, biggest non-nuclear bomb in the United States was the MOAB, the Massive Ordnance Airburst. It's taller than I am. Yeah. 
Well, now we have a bigger one. <laughs> because we're America. <laughs> Originally, the Moab was 10,000 pounds, or roughly, if I remember correctly, something like that. This one is 30,000 pounds, and known as the Mop. Uh, the Massive Ordnance Penetrator. Penetrator. <laughs> Let's say that one more time, just so you understand. It's supposed to penetrate 200 feet of concrete. Holy crap. Mainly used to get rid of... Uh, enemy nuclear stations or whatever, mainly for, as they say, rogue states. Who um, might be developing nuclear things in nuclear places. Iran! Uh, what? Uh, they're not supposed to, North Korea. So, <laughs> <laughs> still going for that uh, that declaration of war. We're waiting. And not on America. We're talking about on the extraordinary times. We want them to actually declare war on, on the us. Yes. But not really. Please don't. Oh, gosh. Moving on to, well, Russia news, because we were just talking about war stuff. Well, it's kind of nice because, well, America, if you don't know, has a lot of naval bases, like, everywhere to do all the things everywhere. And... Russia kind of wants a piece of that, and so they're talking about expanding their naval stations from just the one that they have in Syria. By the way, we found out that's why they were deploying ships to Syria, because that's their only not-Russian Russian naval station. It's crazy. So, you know, you think, being American, we're like, oh, we'll just send it wherever we want to, because we have stations everywhere. But they don't. And they want more. So, you know, they're talking to Cuba and Vietnam because those are good people to talk to after right. their, their previous history. Some really random island out in the middle of uh, the Indian Ocean called Seashells. So, cool. Speaking of Russia-Cuba relations all that, uh, Ra Raul Castro, let's see if I can say his name, uh, the current leader of Cuba, has come out and said, yeah, I'm actually open to talks with pretty much anyone, including America, and, and, and just willing to go out and... Uh, deal with anybody as long as we're on equal terms. It's, this is a really Whoa! big step. It's really huge because Raul Castro was actually the brother of Fidel, who was the leader back in the day when uh, Cuba and America had their very large differences that led to basically we don't even recognize Cuba as a country technically. So, uh -huh. yeah, they're like 90 miles away, and we're like, I don't know you. I don't see you. We've had an embargo on them for forever. 50 year, 50 year old U.S. embargo on Cuba, and now they're finally like, okay, yeah, um, we're done. And we've been talking to North Korea? I mean, come on. Really? These are our neighbors. Should be nice to our neighbors-ish. But thank you so much for watching The Extraordinary Times. As always, I'm Jeremy. I'm AJ. There's a like button over here. There's a favorite button over here-ish. If you're watching on YouTube, watch on YouTube. There's a subscribe button on there, too, because, you know, YouTube likes you subscribing. It's free. It's fun. And you can share us with your friends if you want. We really like that. That would be great. Love you. And we will see you later. <laughs> To the outro. Be aware. I have a very quick answer. Tomorrow. This is Friday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Freaking A.